Welcome to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm John. We're a couple of overweight barbecue enthusiasts trying to share our love for sweet, smoky food with the world. Thanks for hanging out with us as we talk about life, share recipes, successes, and failures that have all led to our love of cooking outdoors. Hey, howdy, hey. Yeah. <laughs> it's You just got to do it now. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Fat Guys with Smokers. Um, I'm Mike, here with John, on this snowy evening. Oh my gosh. We almost died on the way home from Maverick. No, I don't know the way, on the way home from Maverick was that bad. Yeah, that's true. I mean, a little bit. it was a little, it was a little sad, freaking closing our store for a month. I'm very upset about this. We want to start a petition, <laughs> but it turns out they're just upgrading, so they'll be back. Yeah, but. so... But um, driving home from work at dude five fifteen tonight. I have never been that scared in my life. It uh, <coughs> I've driven through snow squalls before, mm-hmm. but I don't think I've ever been in one in like a powder storm. Yeah, like normally it's big chunky flakes and it's a lot of them, but you can see through them. Mm-hmm. This was like driving through a frozen like fog cloud that was blowing at 40 miles an hour yeah it was unreal like i i was telling john i drive the same road every day and i almost turned into a few people's houses because i couldn't (laughs) tell where the turn was it was pretty wild yeah yeah i tried to i didn't want to go out on the highway because i didn't trust everyone around me Mm -hmm. which from your stories it sounds like i made the right choice indeed you did people are really bad drivers but on the side road i did kick it into four-wheel drive like it was it was no bueno and it all happened in about 15 minutes yeah like yeah and then it was gone and it still snowed a little bit but for that 15 minutes it was crazy like i finished my drives went into the school got my things ready and came out and was just like what just happened it was pretty wild plus downgrading from the truck to the civic really takes a lot of my uh What's the word I'm looking for? Peace of mind, I guess. Your joy? On the road. Yes. Well, that too. But. Um, I won't beat you up about it. Thank you. But I will send you a picture of the gas station receipt when I go to fill my truck up tomorrow. That, that would make me feel better, actually, if you would do that. I'd really appreciate my, that. Uh, although my dad did call me. He's like, hey, I got 80 cents at, at Smith's. You can, you can have it. Jeez. Nice. <laughs> But it's a 36-gallon tank, and I'm willing to bet I take at least 33 tomorrow. Jeez. Yeah, I'll be honest. That has been the best part of the yeah. Civic. For sure. Yeah. But, uh, hey, let's uh, let's talk about your sweet hat there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was going to take it off, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, this is, uh, this is my wife, Whitney. She got this on Etsy. So nice. she took our logo and sent it to him, and it's leather, and they just put it on. Oh, it's, it's leather? Hat. Yeah, I think Man, so. Lean over here. Let me, That's uh, what they said. Maybe uh, pleather? I don't actually know. No, that is. I thought it was, when I first saw it, I thought it was like a like a neoprene or something. Yeah. But that's sweet. I think that's what it is. So if you like those, hit us in the comments. Indeed. If we, enough people comment, I think we can convince our wives. Uh, I've... I haven't even told you how far down that road I've gone. Oh dear, we're uh, we're pretty close. We just, I just need to know that I'm <laughs> gonna be able to make back the money that I spend. That's fair. So that's fair. Um, if you want the merch, you need to tell us. And I'm a big fan of hats. Yeah, I love hats for sure. Especially the like really big hats that are made from for fat guy heads. Yeah, and you're, uh, dude. I keep forgetting about your. What do you call that? Your hat saver or whatever? Oh yeah, your man pawn. <laughs> Is that what you called it? I forgot about that. Every time I th- I like try and describe it, I go, "You ever watch the Man Show?" <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a sweat guard for mm. your hat, dude. I got I've, a stack of them upstairs. If you want a couple, I bet we could get into wholesaling those as fat guys. Like, dude, people be into it. Well, it. All right. Let's be real. I sweat a lot. Nonstop. It doesn't matter. 
I went hunting the other day. It was 30 degrees outside by the time we got back to the truck. That means it was like 20 degrees when we started, and I was dripping wet with sweat. Yeah. Um, and it sucks. Like, you get a nice hat, and then you get, like, all that, like, head sweat going, and it yeah. seeps through and stains like your hat. salty. And it, and, yeah. Yeah. So you put one of these in there, and it just sucks it up, protects it. You tear it out, put a new one in, and... Genius. I have forgotten until right now that you had those. I need to invest because they I come in a, a pack of, of like twenty five. Do they really? Yeah, remind me. I'll give you. I've got a stack of them upstairs, just really? sitting in the room. Okay, well, that's for sure happening. Yeah, don't let me forget. Nice, but so with that, everybody, we're gonna get it out of the way. You've got two homework assignments. One, comment on the merch. Comment the merch. You want the merch? Comment the merch. We ain't doing no merch unless people want the merch. Um, second, Mike and I have been talking a good bit about this. We have indeed. And I think we are going to introduce a live episode. Live episode! Live from Saturday night! Dun, 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 I totally dun, killed that, dun. but it's probably good. This way the peacock can't sue me. Yeah, it's good, actually. Yeah, I yeah. support it. And you left out the New York part, which I'm not going to New York, so I'm on board. New York's fun, but it's fun in small doses with the right group of people. Yeah, I went when I was 18, and I'm good. Like, yeah. Mm, we should go back now that you have grown-up money. That's true. I spent a day, I uh, spent a few hours there, and that was it. No. And we just walked around. New York can be pizza. fun. I like Chicago better, but... Oh, yeah, you're a Chicago boy, aren't you? Mm-hmm. That's right. But, uh, no, the Big Apples, it can be fun. Yeah. All right. But back to where I was going with Sorry. this. <laughs> surprise, surprise. John and Mike go down the rabbit hole. No, we want to do a live episode. Um, time and date to be set, but it will probably be either a weeknight, about 8 o'clock mountain, or a Saturday morning. So hit us in the comments. Tell us what you like. Um, and we'll go live on YouTube and potentially also Facebook at the same time. Which would be nice to get like real-time questions, comments, yep. to actually interact with so. all of our adoring fans. Yep. So, love to get your questions. We'll do a little Q&A. We'll take uh, questions and prompts from the audience to kind of drive the episode. But if nobody shows up... One, it'll be really embarrassing, <laughs> and two, it'll be a real short episode. It'll be just like when you're in college and you had the five minute ditch rule. So, I support it. Uh, those are your two homework assignments. We need two comments. Two comments from each of you. The merch, and if you want a Saturday morning or a weeknight on on our live episode. And if it goes well, we'll make it a regular thing. We'll do it every month. Yeah, I think it could be really fun as long as we get some participation. Yeah. As a high school teacher, I'm used to not getting a lot of participation, but it sure makes a big difference when it does show up. So please don't be shy. Hit us up. Yeah. Plus, it'll be kind of fun to see who see who shows up. Yeah, who actually, yeah. Who actually still listens, for sure. Yeah. For sure. All righty. With that, Let's I had a shout out, but I can't find it. Oh. Um, I mean, I wrote down the video that I watched, but I haven't researched him enough to feel like I no, I found, can do him justice in a shout out. So While I was scrolling, I came across a killer, and like I'm mad because it was a recipe too, hmm. um, a killer recipe for steak queso. Oh. And it- Like dip? Yeah. With steak in it? Or yeah, did you like, dip your steak no, in? No, no, no. Like queso dip topped with steak. Oh, my gosh. It was like carne asada nachos, but in dip form. And I was real excited about it. That sounds divine. How do you do that with steak? Do you just slice it thin in strips or what? Yeah, you. Uh, so you cook it, strip it, and then just like... S- cut the strips into bite-sized pieces and oh that sounds good dang Mm -hmm. yeah find that yeah you like made a queso and then where you 
you cooked the steaks on a flat top, mm-hmm. and in the steak juice, you caramelized onions and put those into the queso. Yes. Yeah, it was... Wow. I'll have to find it. Yeah, that sounds bomb. It would be good enough to travel for. <clears throat> Speaking of travel, John... You like how I did that? Yeah, well done. <laughs> like we rehearsed it. Uh, we're gonna go. Uh, I think we're gonna make this a thing, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna try to highlight barbecue from other parts of the world. So we, I feel like we've at least touched on most of the stuff that we have here in the U.S. Uh, but the world is a big place, John. I feel and like you need to get over yourself, you know, and open your. <laughs> surroundings up that sounded really negative Sorry. i was gonna say i feel like I've, i'm pretty well cultured and i would I've like been to around. apologize i was i was meaning rhetorically everyone you I, know i feel like we need a, a sound bite to intro this that says like fat guys do the world Ooh, that could be awesome could be where in the world is where john the and mike the fat are- guys Fat guys that like barbecue. Yes. Or we could just do fat guys with smokers. Fat guys with smokers. The name of our podcast. We, we shouldn't We shouldn't rehearse this while we're recording. <laughs> That's an a episode. good call. This is, <laughs> live episode is going to be hey, real nice. We're authentic, nice. but uh, hey, <clears throat> uh, uh, there's a reason that windows have drapes on them. Indeed. Like, Indeed. Um, yeah. So we're going to start with Asia. John, why'd you decide to start with Asia? We were texting about this last night. And you were like, let's do Asia. And I was like, heck yeah. Um, because the first thing that came to mind was Korean barbecue. Yes. But I also knew you had a soft spot in your heart for the Asian people. I do indeed. Now, I spent some time with the Hmong people, which are like the indigenous mountain people of Laos and Thailand. Not anywhere near or related to the people of Mongolia. Mongolian. So none of this hoo hot stuff. We And honestly, they make delicious food. But I can't think of anything that we really had that was barbecued. I mean, they make some good food, um, but fried, fried or boiled was basically how they served their meat. So yeah. uh, a lot of pork belly, a lot of pork fat that they just grill up and hand to you. And I mean, it was really good, but not as I mean, those Thai flavors and stuff are less. In barbecue and more in the vegetables and the stuff they serve with it. No. So, but, but Korea, dude, I started in Korea and Japan thinking I'm gonna make my way all the way through Asia by the time we air this episode. And two hours later, I'm still on Korea. So yeah, so I started with Japan, but Japan's barbecue really is just a variation of Korean barbecue. That's what I saw. They almost like stole it. Well, it. Uh, I read it with a slightly different perspective hmm. from the author that it, uh, when, I don't know which war it was, but there were, was a war that drove people out of Korea, could mm-hmm. have been the Korean conflict, mm-hmm. um, or I know they've had several wars. They're a warring nation, it seems like, mm-hmm. um, but immigrants from Korea to Japan brought the barbecue with are the them. ones that introduced like no. all their like apparently the hibachi style grill is based off of the korean grill that mm-hmm. they just had on the tabletop which is crazy yeah. did you also read i wrote this down that japanese didn't eat beef until like 1872 what yeah apparently it was some religious thing now this is not a historical podcast don't come at me but Actually, um, please come at him in the comments. Yeah, that's true. Comment. You have free <laughs> homework now. Um, but yeah, so I wrote down it was illegal to eat beef due to some Japanese religious philosophy. And I didn't get way into it because, I mean, I don't know anything about it and I'm not going to pretend to. But apparently the emperor ate beef like in public in 1872. And now, I mean... That's kind of what the Japanese, I feel like, are known for, at least barbecue-wise, like Kobe beef and mm-hmm. all the big stuff. And they are, I mean, they they still do pork and chicken and everything, but their beef is is kind of the star of the show, it seems like, in all their barbecue stuff. Yeah, and beef seemed really prevalent in Korean barbecue, yeah. too, that it's... And I, I did think it was a little interesting... Um, you know, one of the big differences... 
Like in America, when we say barbecue, mm -hmm. and especially among us elitist and purist, mm. when you say barbecue, that's big chunks of meat cooked over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Grilling is, you know, hot and fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Japanese barbecue and really Korean barbecue, it's really small cuts of meat. Yeah. Cooked over a grill that you, like you put a, a grill in the center of the table and cook over that and like eat your meal. and. See, this is where I went down my rabbit hole because I did this once, I remember, with a Laotian couple uh, that we met on my mission. And they just put like a, I'm trying to think, like a griddle that you would do like pancakes on, oh, you yeah. know, just like a, an electric griddle. They put that in the middle of the table, and we kind of did this, and it was a blast. And I've been trying to think of how to do it. Apparently, that's just how they do it in a lot of these Korean and Japanese restaurants. Like, there's just a grill in the middle of the table. Yeah. The, th the meat is cut in thin slices. Um, it seems like in Korea, really heavy on the marinade and the spices. In Japan, the meat is pretty much plain, and then you dip it in deliciousness. But people just sit and talk and... You know, grill with their chopsticks on their tabletop, a lot of charcoal grills or whatever, and, and just eat. It sounds like a blast. Yeah, well, and that's what I, that was the one, like, commonality I picked out of it between Asian barbecue and American barbecue. Mm -hmm. Man, it's all about the people. Yeah. It's the experience of cooking it being with people interacting and like the connections that it facilitates more mm -hmm. than it is about the meat. Right. Which I think is cool. Like I almost feel like we're, I mean, that's why we love barbecue sharing it with people. Oh yeah. And I feel like they're a lot less focused on the meat and, and at least what I read, I mean, you can go really expensive, but a lot of this meat you cut into little thin strips and you can use, uh, in Korean style, it seems like the star is the marinade and the spices. Yeah. And so they can get away with kind of cheaper cuts of meat. In Japan, it's more like the meat is the star, and so you use more high-dollar stuff. But, um, yeah, it just kind of made me think, man, why aren't we doing this more? You know, like it sounds like a blast. Yeah, it's like fondue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. barbecue. Which, how can it get better? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, like... The uh, the fondue pot is pretty fun. Like everyone's sticking it in. My kids love it, but I think they would love it even more if it was a like barbecue style. Yeah, and I mean, you're just throwing your meat on there, flipping it over, and popping it in your mouth. Like that just sounds like a cool experience. I feel like kids would eat it up, yeah. literally and figuratively. But yeah. the lights are casting the weirdest shadow on your forehead that only. Really? It almost looks like you've got, I hope it shows up on the camera, Like I've got but when, when you're looking at me, it almost looks like you've got this like hourglass shaped bruise on your forehead <laughs> that <laughs> the first time I looked over, I was like, what happened? <laughs> like, how did I not see that before? <laughs> Speaking of bruises. This is a tangent, but Whitney fell down the stairs the other day. Oh like, no, just your front she stairs went down hard. Yeah, Eesh. like it's. I got it on the ring doorbell. It was brutal, but I have had the pleasure of taking a look at the bruise every day as it progresses through the bruising stages. Bruises are crazy, man. Yeah. But it's just black, and she was tough about it. But man, I would not. She went have down been. hard. Yeah, I told her if that was me. You just have to bury me there. Like, nobody's getting me up after that. But anyway. Yeah. I digress. Oh, dude, your stairs are... Yeah. They're friggin' brutal, man. They are. I've salted the crap out of them. My concrete's going to start just crumbling, but uh, it's not safe. Yeah. Um, anyway. Barbecue. Yeah. Let's... Uh, while we're on tangents... Yeah. Let's go down a little bit one. What do you know okay. about kimchi? Uh, I've had it before. And? Uh, it's all right. I mean, people like swear by it and are way into it. Um, and I, I, it's fine. It's just like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just like pickled cabbage, right? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that they put into it. Um, but it, let's see. 
it, it is primarily Napa cabbage, but it's got peppers in it too sometimes and other vegetables that are in there. Um, and it can be fermented for different periods of time. Mm. And I guess that's the thing. It's fermented, not fermented. just pickled. Yeah. Um, because that's part of the reason it's like had such a like big coming around. There's a different word I was going to use. I can't think of what it was, but like emergence. That's a good word. That's a solid. It just came to my mind. Hey, put that one on your Scrabble list, everybody. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if it's but a word. But be, it, because it's fermented, it's like full of probiotics and yeah, that's it's, right. It's that's like what I've kombucha heard. now that people are like, oh, I got to eat my yeah my kimchi to get my probiotics and it's supposed to be really healthy for you yeah i i mean i knew a lady that had some and i mean it was literally you know those cheeto puff jars Uh that are just massive it was that in her fridge but it was just full of kimchi and she'd just pull it out she'd put it in recipes or she would just eat it like by itself so see i grew up in the south and that's what people put pickled pig's feet and eggs in Mm. So every time I see a big old jar of kimchi, like I go back to like the green pickled pig's feet that I'm just like, Ooh, never had it. Don't want to try it. I don't think I'm going to go there. Um, but it like, it's, I kind of want to find someone who really knows about kimchi or has good kimchi Mm -hmm. so that I can try it. Give it a shot. Is it, while it's not barbecue sauce and I don't want to confuse it. Like, have anyone... Actually, it's barbecue sauce. Add Come at, at us, bro. <laughs> um, it's not It's not barbecue sauce, but it seems like it carries some of the same, like, sweet and sour yeah. and spicy flavors that yeah, you can get out of different barbecues. Yeah, especially if you, like, have those different varieties, like you said. That's interesting. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm feeling interested, at least to start. Mm-hmm. Not sure I'm brave enough yet. It... You start talking about fermenting stuff, and I'm yeah, just like... I get nervous. It seems like a great way to get sick. Right. Yeah. No, I I knew... A, I had a friend that was really into it and loved it and would talk about it. He's like, oh, you got to try this kimchi. And I had some, and it was all right, but I don't know. That's the only time I've ever tried it. Have you ever marinated anything in pickle juice? Um, In pickle juice... I I know that you do um now I'm blanking on it. Whatever the hot chicken sandwich is. The is it Memphis hot chicken sandwich? Or, oh. Is marinated in pickle juice. Oh, um I, didn't I did know the that. Malcolm or not the Malcolm Reed, the the meat church. Oh yeah, the meat church one in in pickled jalapenos. Oh yeah. So that's juice. kind of the same thing. Yeah. Hmm. But it, I mean it it's a brine. Yeah. So I like. I'd be supportive of it. I, I was just, just thinking. I wondered if you could use kimchi as kind of a oh, marinade slash brine deal. type of deal. I'm not a big fan of dill pickles. I don't like pickles at all. I, uh, I think they stink. That's from Little Rascal. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I think they stink. I love pickles. Um, I will keep my dollar. Thank you very much. Of course. But. Um, yeah, Haley loves pickles. Mm. I will eat bright green relish on a dog with mustard and onions because that's what you do when you're in Chicago and I'm proud of my heritage. Sure. Um, otherwise, yeah, I just, I'm not a huge pickle fan. I don't, I've every, never liked them. Every once in a while I get a craving for a hamburger, like a, just a cheeseburger with some dill pickles on it. Mm-hmm. But then I eat one, and then I remember why I don't normally put pickles on my hamburger. So I think for me it's a texture thing because I remember I used to get burgers, but I wouldn't have them take the pickles off, and I would take the pickles off because I kind of liked the taste of the pickle juice mm. like in the bread. Um, but I can't do the like I don't know the crunchy like chewy weirdness. I like them when they're crunchy. Really, I don't like the McDonald's like slimy yeah throw it and have it stick to a window type of oh yeah we used to do that we used to have races Uh for sure what movie is that i don't know i I have it in my mind thinking of it with me (laughs) is it dumb and dumber maybe they do it in dumb and dumber i don't know i thought it was a i'm not a huge dumb and dumber fan either so i uh gosh john how are we even (laughs) friends sometimes man i don't know man 
Um, <coughs> I think it's uh, Billy Madison. That's what I was wondering. It seems it's like Billy it's Madison. in Adam Sandler. That's what it is. Yeah, it's in Billy Madison where they do that. Mm. But anyways, back to barbecue. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Some of the prevalent flavors. Yeah, in... you're right. It's Billy Madison. Thank you very much. Um, in Korean barbecue, uh, soy sauce, mm-hmm. garlic. Um, how do you feel about sesame oil? I was going to ask you that. I don't know. I mean, I use it at Hoo Hot. That's basically the only time I've ag- ever actually used it. But I've been watching. Remember that aggressive tutorial girl I shouted oh, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She does a lot of Asian foods. And she's like, dude, sesame oil is where it's at. You oh, don't use yeah. a lot of it, but it really carries Yeah, it's it. super powerful. So you got to. Yeah. Like go easy on it, but I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, it seems like the sesame I love type that. flavor. Like I was looking at some spices that they have, and I mean, there's like a bunch of different types of sesame seeds that they put in their their uh, their rubs and and whatever. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Yeah. Um, normally, when I'm doing fried rice or something, I'll I'll, oh, I'll yeah. bust out the sesame seed. So oil. how much are we talking? Like a tablespoon? Because yeah. it's not. It's pretty. From what I understand, you don't use a whole lot of it. Yeah, it's like a tablespoon, but like a real tablespoon, not a vanilla type tablespoon. Yeah, not like the little cap, but the big one. No, I just mean like, at least when I measure vanilla, it's like, oh, there's the, there's the, the tablespoon. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> <clears throat> gotcha. Gotcha. Kind of, kind of one of those things. Yeah. But uh, what does it taste like? I mean, I know I've eaten it, but could you explain it? Um, Asia. No, yeah. I mean, it tastes like it tastes like toasted sesame seed smell, mm. but it's a it's a rich flavor, mm-hmm. and it can be overpowering. Like it can get bitter. Mm. It's almost like liquid smoke okay. of Asian food. Interesting. That's why I'm going to describe it as. I like it. Probably going to make someone mad. Come at us. Um, and then some of the other flavors, spices, mm-hmm. and then I've debated whether I was going to try and say this or not, but I'm going to do it anyways. I support it. The go gochugara, go go gochugaru, is the Korean. Red pe- red pepper flake mm-hmm. that adds a lot of heat. Yeah, that um, I'm a big fan of. I like I like hot things. I would imagine it's pretty similar to the Thai chili pepper. Mm-hmm. Hmong people put that in everything, and I mean, they'd make sticky rice, and you would just dip just a tiny little bit of that red pepper sauce, and it was man, it was good. Oh man! Also, fish oil. You ever use fish oil? I haven't. Or fish sauce, I guess. Yeah. Hmong people were way into that, and I was not into it at first, but I don't mind it. You got to know what you're doing, though, because it, it's it's gross if you use too much. Yeah, it's stinky. Yeah. It's not my... It literally just smells like fish. Yeah. But when mixed correctly, it's actually pretty decent. Yeah. I, uh, I grew up hearing and being told if it smells like fish, it's probably old. Mm. Like the I good, get like, that, man. like fresh seafood mm-hmm. shouldn't smell fishy. It should smell fresh and clean. Really? And, yeah. See, I don't have a lot of exposure to seafood, but that makes sense. Yeah. So I smell fish oil, and I immediately am just like, <clears throat> throw it out. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no, um, hmm. not my thing. But we'll. Uh, yeah, I haven't used fish sauce. Um. The. What I have used a lot of, though, let's get back here to my Japanese barbecue notes. Um, Bakan is a, I think I'm saying that right. Where did it go? Ah, I lost it. Lost it here in here in my notes. Mm, I don't think I saw that one. Um, Bakken, like B A C H A N. Yep, just like the oh, the j- oh, here delicious it is. Right Japanese here. barbecue sauce. It's right here with the bold heading that says Bakken. Oh, there it is. Yeah, found it. <clears throat> yeah, it's 
So in Korean barbecue, bakan is bangkan. That's probably how you say it. Or bang chang is um, it's the side dishes mm-hmm. that it's you know kimchi, pickled vegetables, little appetizers, um, but it's there to enhance the dining experience. Yeah. Well, Japanese barbecue sauce, the one of the like most Americanized brands is bang chang, and it. You'll see it at Costco if you go there. Walmart's got like three different flavors of it now. But tall white bottle with red lettering all over it. Got an octopus on it. Yeah. It's got the the octopus with the samurai headband. Mm-hmm. Wonder if that's offensive to the actual Japanese people. I I don't know. I don't know either. I would imagine, but probably. Um man, that stuff's like a addictive as crap dude we we did that when we did those uh that pork at girls camp and man it was uh-huh. amazing that was i think that was the first time i'd actually had it oh it was really really at least that brand really yeah good it's kind of like a teriyaki but it's uh mm-hmm. less sweet and just more flavorful yeah and yeah we we'll go through phases where like it just goes on everything mm. and they've got another one it's in it's green lettering instead of I was just the seeing red. that. They've got green and orange. Yeah. What's going on there? The green is ginger based. Ooh. Okay. If you like ginger, it is where the money is at. Yuzu. Huh? Mm-hmm. The Uzu. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember what the orange one is. Mustard or something? Uh, hot and spicy is what it says. Oh, so pr- that's probably right. something like that. Looks like the yuzu, according to this Amazon thing that I just saw. Uh, yeah. Never mind. I thought it was specific to the yuzu, but it's just saying everything is good on wings and chicken and beef and pork and seafood and noodles and more. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan anytime I can have a sauce that goes on just everything. We, yeah. yeah. Right now we're, uh, I think we talked about this before, I'm hooked on raspberry chipotle barbecue sauce from head country yeah man it goes on everything we eat here mm. raspberry chipotle huh mm-hmm. yeah from uh scrambled eggs oh all the way down to your chicken wings like that's how i get dude when i discover a new sauce it goes on everything for a while until i'm ready for something new and then that goes on everything for a yeah. while well we we are major consumers of green cholula i just purchased some Big fan. And we ran out. Oh. And I thought it was going to be like World War Three at my house. Really? Yeah. The whole family then eats it. Oh, my boys were... Like, even <laughs> Clay, he was like, what do you mean you don't have any more? Don't you love me? I was like, yeah, I love you. Like, what does this have to do with the fact that we ran out of something? Well, if you loved me, you would have put it in the cart. <laughs> That's awesome. Um. Anyways, so I pulled out the barbecue sauce and... Man, it's been, it's been a solid Smooth option. Sailing, huh? Yeah, that's a good number too. So, right on. All right. Um, did we miss anything? I mean, here? I'm sure we did. We didn't get everything, but yeah, I I think it's it just goes back to like when you really think about barbecue. Like, I have a ton of fun cooking, and I love the like process and the science and mm-hmm. the patience it teaches me. Mm-hmm. Um. But it's really about like bringing people together. Yeah, like that's what the point of barbecue is for me. Right. Um, and we were, we had the had a motivational speaker come. Our sales team is in town. They're doing their big like annual kickoff, and they uh, they always have a speaker come in mm-hmm. to get them all riled up for the year. And they invited some of the operations teams to come listen. And we were sitting there talking, um, and. I probably shouldn't say this. Like, <laughs> I'm sure somebody I work with <laughs> listens to this, but it, uh, like, I'm sitting there and he's like talking about like being a great leader and like bringing value, like bringing more value than you take from the equation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, how can I do that with barbecue for people? Like, how do I like, <laughs> how do I get them to have value in their barbecue? Heck yeah. Um, I was having like all these like fantasies of like running up like barbecue shop that um 
people like want to be hanging out in and like it's nice right. and friendly and welcoming and not an intense sales pitch and like what can I help you find what do you need what are you doing here why are you doing that right that uh you have at certain other establishments yeah indeed we both know who we're talking about we both know yep so but that's what barbecue is and yeah. that's uh I mean that's what this podcast is all about just a couple of guys goofing off. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> really? seriously. Someone was asking me. Tangents. Yeah, somebody was like, have you made any money here yet? I was like, nope. It's <laughs> just an excuse that my buddy and I have to goof off every 100%. week. 100%. So. It also gives me ideas because I am seriously in the market for one of those Japanese, Korean, hibachi tabletop grills. Because I think that sounds like a blast. So You I'm heard it here first. Research on that. Whitney, don't be mad at me. It's not my fault. Okay, it's probably my fault. Listen, I have been the bruise inspector for long enough. I feel like I deserve to at least pitch the idea. It bruises, and when they get old, it's like, man, it's bad. Yeah. My arm, when it bruised up after I had surgery, Mm -hmm. like that thing, I was like black, blue, orange, yellow, and green. Yeah. From like my wrist to my shoulder for a the while. Colors, it's pretty intense. Yeah, that one we should have taken pictures of. I'm. We probably shouldn't take pictures of Whitney, so I'm guessing. But uh, yeah, Hence the color. I am the inspector. Every the night. colors of those could be. That could be art right there. Yeah, it's true. Beautimous. It's like that uh, <laughs> grand prismatic <laughs> spring in Yellowstone. You know what I'm talking about. It's like all no. beautiful and rainbow like. I've never been to Yellowstone, bro. I know. Honestly, I went for the first time like two years ago. So, I grew up in Rexburg. We were three hours from Yellowstone, or two, not even two. Yeah. But we would go to West Yellowstone and watch a play, and then go home, and it was awesome. I was just looking at VRBOs last night to go to, to be uh, in Island Park oh, right for on. President's Day. Go nice. hit Yellowstone in the winter. Yeah, that's where we went. So it wasn't in the winter, but on that note, until it, next time, <laughs> I'm John. I'm Mike. Thanks for listening to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't forget to tune in for even more nonsense from a couple of Fat Guys with Smokers. Don't forget to like subscribe.